Yeah, that's nice Thank to know you. about SEO. <laughs> yeah. uh, so um, that's my VPN actually. I was working. So um, my name is Santil Kumaran. Um, I work as a software engineer at Twitter. And thanks all for coming to know something about what's happening at Twitter. I'll post the VPN stuff. Okay. Um, I used to, I, just one and a half years ago, I used to work in Singapore at different companies like Lucasfilm and stuff. Um, and I got an opportunity to work as a Python developer at Twitter and then I took, took it up. Uh, it's interesting and um, I have to say that uh, uh, it's one of the uh, good experiences I've had because I tend to work with uh, extremely sharp developers from all over the world and, uh, and being a member of the set of developers who are like really skilled and really passionate about what they do, uh, that, that first it helps me motivate to, to be in the development line for a long time, like be, be as a good developer for long and then also helps me to appreciate the craft, which is software development. It's not just a business about developing software, it's, like, it's a craft. It's, it's how you develop the software, how you make the software stable, and what are the complexities which are involved in, uh, in developing a software which is usable by millions of people, of people in the world all over the day. Like, I can definitely appreciate, Twitter has a, about a good percentage of like 250 million users every day, every second. Facebook has a billion users actually per day, which is four times bigger Twitter. And then Google goes by a large, large margin. And all these companies kind of like teach us that uh, how do you develop software which is like used, approved and, uh, and stable across the hands of all the different people and stuff like that. And developing at that scale has challenges. And the team I am in is solving those challenges. How do you develop software at that scale which, uh, which is fast, stable and accurate? So. Um, that's what I do, and uh, in, it, within our team, Python is a major uh, language which is used. Outside of my team, uh, Scala is the language which is majorly used. Scala and Java are the languages which are majorly used in uh, Twitter, and uh, and C++ for the for the core infrastructure very less, but these are the languages, and uh, and a huge development group, like around thousand engineers are there who work with it. So with that intro, I'll give you the thing. Um, as I said, there's a variety of languages. There is Scala, Java, Python, C++ mostly, and backend services are in Scala. Uh, revenue and machine learning stuff are in Java. Yeah, just a year ago, I saw the actual production-ready machine learning stuff. Okay, the the one which which provides you with uh, the promoted tweet or like the promoted uh, content and stuff like that. Uh, there is a team. The team is called the revenue team. That's what they say. Okay, and the revenue team's whole job is to write the uh, write the programs which make money for the rest of us to work. Actually, that's the one which makes the money. The programs, the machine learning programs, go about doing their job to make the work. Um, I mean, it, it's it looks like one of the major uh, uh, the currently hot hot field in the in the in the industry right now. Machine learning. Um, I'm not there uh, into it, but I have seen friends who are good Java developers, good Scala developers, very good in algorithms. And usually from top universities, uh, and yeah, however they are. Um, and uh, they are into this revenue team which write the money generating stuff. Okay, and generation is like huge, millions of dollars per second or something like that. So, um, and then Thrift. Um, Thrift is a Facebook product. Okay, Thrift is for the protocol agnostic sharing of the code. Like you write a Thrift specification and then you <laughs> give it to someone else and um, he can generate the Scala code, I can generate my Java code. So he can, he can using the Thrift, product, thrift uh, template, you can write your Scala, service, Scala server and I can have my Java client and then we both can interoperate with it. So by, by doing this, we share the Thrift and Thrift becomes a protocol agnostic way of sharing it. And, and huge lot of code is written in Thrift, okay? And surprisingly more. And uh, by writing one Thrift, you can generate Java, Scala, Python, uh, Ruby, all the other languages. So, so that's what like sometimes Facebook, uh, I think it started with Facebook. Facebook and Twitter, what they did was like, uh, each one seems to be expert in different languages. No one is an expert in all the languages, okay? One person may be good in Java, another person may be good in Scala, one person may be good in Python. But in order to have a big company like Facebook or Twitter, you need to have these good focused people into the same team. And you cannot ask everyone to learn the same language again because they'll be losing their expertise. So the solution seems to be like, let's write Thrift. Let's generate the languages which you are comfortable with. And then let's go about 
uh, let's go about uh, writing the client services over the thrift. Okay, let's write the client which will interface on the thrift server in the language which you choice, in the language of your choice, and let's go about with it. Huge, um, I have very less knowledge on that, but uh, we deal with it constantly, every day. Okay, uh, infrastructure and tools are written in Python. Twitter before 2011 and 2010 was mostly Ruby. It started off as a Ruby on Rails app, but later when uh, World Cup and all happened and then billions of people started using it every day in order to have the scalability and in order to have the, the power. Oops. Um, in order to have the power of uh, uh, JVM, Twitter you started using JVM. Okay. Um, so when I said all the languages, let us let let me uh, have something in the background so that so this is my Twitter repository. I'll start counting the major repositories which we have so that let it go in the background and we can come to it later. Okay. Uh, let's count the repos like uh, to give an indication of what all the languages which are used. And this is not full repos yet because I just chose three of the major repos which we work on. And I needed to give that to give an indication of how huge the software development is. Um, and um, and w once we get the results of it, we can come to it. It's, it's, it's still scanning, so let's give it some time. Um, so um, how the development workflow happens is, uh, uh, Git is the version control repository, and it, uh, we all work on a branch. And, um, and then the branch is submitted for a review. So by review, there's a, there is a, there's a tool by name review board, okay? Reviewboard.org, which everyone can, it's an open source tool. Uh, so that the review, the patch which we work on is submitted for the review in the review board. And then there will be experts of each branch or the repositories. And then they are usually listed as the owners in the, in the repository. And the person who's listed as a owner needs to approve and give a ship it. Actually, in, and then only when the review is given a shipment, when you submit it, it doesn't merge into the master yet. It goes into a submit queue, which is like a Jenkins instance. So the whole, the, the submission goes through a Jenkins, and then the whole set of suite is run against the entire world of the Twitter to see that the changes which you are making, even a single print line statement change will be running the entire thousand, uh, thousand tests or so for your repo. And after that is run and then passes, it will get merged to the master by the Jenkins itself. This is the, I mean, each change, it sometimes, if you are doing a change in the major library, core library, it takes a couple of hours after you complete the code and then review it and then submit it to get into master. But once it's master, it's kind of like stable approach that we are, we have written a well-reviewed, tested code which need not have to work. And the reason these kinds of things have happened, okay, when I started in the software development industry working at Dell, we didn't have these kinds of processes in the software. We were, they had manual test teams, okay. Uh, the test team's job was to download the binary and run the tests against it. And with companies like new web 2.0 companies, there is no manual test teams at all. The, the, that industry is gone actually, unfortunate. But because it has been replaced by tools which have such a streamlined process of review and uh, uh, automated testing and stuff like that, which give you a good graphical result of uh, if it's correct or not. So if the submit queue says okay, then the change is much faster. And then deployment, it's like, it depends on the team, like uh, uh, immediately it's deployed to the, to the hosts wherever we are, and it's controlled by a decider, okay, that's what we call the decider. So there is a, there is a, there is a web framework by name decider, which has all the features. So the one which you saw twitter.com on the website, it has like 120 services, okay, by that I mean that, uh, <coughs> so <coughs> each, each thing, this, this page is a service. Uh, this following tweets and followers are different endpoints of service. This hoop to follow, this is like a machine learning algorithm going on to say, suggest who, whom you should follow. And then the trends, it's basically given from the search and analytics team, which goes and then searches for all the things and then gives it. And this is a separate service. And this one is running on like hundreds and two hundreds of machines. Okay, this is one. Uh, <coughs> and this. Okay, this is like the Twitter page consists of like 100 services and each 100 services, one service will consist of like 10 engineers and uh, so 10 into 100, that many engineers are there, 1000 engineers are there. So, <coughs> this is, and I was surprised to you know that the Google Docs, right, okay, the, I mean, 
because I knew this because my uh, team member whom I work with used to work on the Google Docs team. And um, um, you see that in the Google Docs there is the star button to make it a favorite. You remember that? The star button? Okay. The star button, this seems to be the service in Google and there are 30 people working on it. 30. 30. <laughs> And all smart engineers, by the way. <laughs> no, nothing of that thing. Yeah. So that seems to be, I mean, surprising to know. <laughs> that, that seems to be the state of the world right now. Okay. Uh, did, I, did I go here? Yeah, depending on the team you are and the kind of service, your code is immediately deployed. Application engineers are encouraged to turn experimental features on a subset of users. That is followed by all the web companies again. <coughs> Because you can randomly select one percent of the users and then turn on a particular feature to get the user feedback on. That's that. <coughs> and in order to support the architecture of Twitter, which is like real-time web uh, used by millions of people per second, and then different clients and the TV channels and everything, um, what we needed to support the development for was a scalable version control system, which is Git, but with a lot of engineering energy got gone into it. Um, the, the review process was something which I contributed majorly. Like we had a tool by name Git Review, which is not uh, open source yet, but uh, <coughs> that's one. Uh, but the scalability of Git is itself is a huge, uh, huge thing. Uh, Facebook faced the problem. They went about with uh, trying to use Mercurial. Um, I used Mercurial before using Git. And I think that Git is better than Mercurial. But, and so some of the engineers also think that too. So um, Twitter is investing on Git again, like thinking that uh, let's see if we can uh, enhance Git by using a sharded, sharded scalability thing. Okay, instead of instead of putting our effort on the Git software on the object model itself, let's shard the servers where the Git servers are installed so that our latency is small and then uh, and we, Git can support better, which works fine. I mean, I don't have any complaints, but there are people who have a lot of complaints against it. And Facebook seems to having complained, and then they are moving to Mercurial. I have no idea about it. Um, build system to support multiple languages. Okay, this seems to be interesting because I had no idea about what it is before I joined Twitter. Um, um, if you are a Java developer, you may perhaps be using Ant or Gradle or Maven. Uh, Gradle is used by the Android Studio for the Android development. Ant and Ant is majorly in the Eclipse world, and then Gradle is Maven is another one. Uh, I had used none of them because I had never used Java before. <coughs> I didn't know about what is a building. Uh, Python doesn't use that. Python doesn't build it. Python is interpreted. Uh, but in order to support multiple languages, it's easier and better to build the software, create a binary executable, uh, attach the dependencies, and create a jar so that uh, a, a jar which consists of all the dependencies together so that you can deploy the jar as a single binary on the deploy. And the idea came about like this. They wanted the whole twitter.com to be a single jar, okay, which can be thrown into a cloud and then run. <clears throat> so that is why uh, I think historically they went about with this. And in order to have this, uh, yeah, <coughs> in, let, I mean, I ran this the count, lines of code count, and just before the three, three meter repositories, uh, in order to have Java, Scala, Ruby, Python, Bond shells, SQL, and a little bit of CSS somewhere, C++. In order to have all these combined together into a, <coughs> into a language, uh, not into a build, it needs to, I mean, there is not, Ant cannot do it. Ant simply will not support all these languages. Okay, Maven cannot do it either. So Google has something called uh, Blaze, okay, their build system. I'm not sure if, they, if there is a Google Blaze build system. <coughs> okay, so here, building in the cloud, how the build system works, uh, that is the thing. Uh, Facebook has Buck build system. Oops. <laughs> build. So it's a, it's a Java build tool, okay, and Twitter has Pants. <laughs> okay, so this is this is our uh, Python. Uh, this is our build system used in Twitter, and um, uh, this is what I work on, the team which I work on, and uh, <coughs> and it's about writing uh, 
like compiling the languages and everything which is written in variety of languages which I showed you. So, uh, given this much of information, the introduction, I can dive a bit into the build system and then show you how things are. Okay. <laughs> if I speed up, please don't mind. Um, <clears throat> we, we, can, uh, uh, we can have that thing there. Uh, and by the way, all these build systems, Facebook is open source too, Buck, but it's for JVM Java and Android only. Twitter is open source too, it's called Twitter GitHub, GitHub Twitter Commons. Uh, it's for Java, Scala and Python. And it's written in Python. Um, I don't know, Facebook's written in Jython perhaps, I don't know. I have never looked at it. But all of them are inspired from Google's build system called Blaze. Um, and all of them have been developed by these engineers who worked on Google, who worked at Google and who were like, who, who found that that build system to be of like very good in building such a good uh, stable software. And they, they got inspired by that and then whichever company they went, like Facebook or Twitter, they went about implementing something similar, okay. So the, the parent of it is Blaze, okay, and people still appreciate it for many things. It's not open source. These children which got forked from that, these are open source. So you can clone it and then look at what it is. Um, the review process, I said like it's a publish and submit. It published to the review board and submit it. That's okay. Okay. <coughs> and Twitter Commons itself includes a build system. It's something similar to Ant, Maven, and Bail, and that's what we are going to talk about. Let's look at an example, okay. Let's directly dive, in, dive into an example. I have the code uh, checked out so that uh, <coughs> we don't have to do it. So I'll increase the font. Okay. So I'll use Python, Twitter, pants, and uh, let me open from there. So this is how the pants uh, thing is. So it starts with, um, and I'll, I'll explain the directory structure from here. Um, <clears throat> the binary which we have, the base, okay. I'm finding it, uh, I'm thinking in terms of how should I give an introduction because if I dive, give, dive in directly, it will not be of like use. I mean, you can give the uh, directory names. But um, let's look at the example of something which we are going to compile, okay. <coughs> uh, so just a question. Mm? Uh, in Twitter, the Python code is run on uh, Jython or Python. Python. C C C Python. So let's look at uh, SRC, SRC Java, com, Twitter, common examples. Ping pong is a name, and then let's look at the uh, uh, build file. Okay. So this ping pong is creating a binary binding ping pong, which has a base name and which has a main class, which is like the main it's pointing to. And it has a dependency called lib, a, a ping pong lib. And the ping pong lib consists of the dependencies which is using the guava, which is like a Java library for, it makes Java a little bit more like, a, it's Google's Java library, actually, guava. And goose is a Google's, again, Java, Java library stuff. And Sun has provided some Jersey client. I, since I don't know much of Java, I do not know what they are for. Okay. I'm giving an example of a Java compilation, and then I'll look at the, I'll give an example of Python compilation. Okay. And then it depends on other modules, like uh, application, HTTP, and HTTP modules. All these are separated into modules, and if I go into one of them, like application or HTTP, say, let's go into common application, and okay, and SRC Twitter common application, that's where I go. And if I op open it, um, again, this is a build file by name application, and it's written as a Java library. And this one says that uh, it provides a jar by name uh, application, which is, uh, which is published in com.twitter namespace. And uh, it has the repo specification wherever it wants to publish it to. And it has its own dependencies, okay? So, <coughs> Uh, where did we go? Okay. So it, as I saw, there's application HTTP and then everything else. Um, it will pull in all these dependencies and then bundle it together into form of a Java library. <coughs> and this Java library can be used to create a JVM binary. Now it forms the sense, right? We wanted to create a JVM binary, a binary which can run on JVM. And the JVM binary will depend on a Java library. 
And the Java library in turn depends on multiple Java libraries. And that this is like this. And in order to create a fans goal build, fans goal, let's say compile. Okay. SRC Java com Twitter common examples ping pong. <coughs> this will go about compiling that <coughs> Java library with that stuff. Okay, let's go fans goal. <coughs> uh, bundle. Okay, it will create a bundled Java library from the different stuff. Okay, creating this ping pong that jar and stuff. And you can also have pants gold run. Okay, I'll get the full example from here. Let's let's run this. Okay, pants gold run. And uh, <coughs> and this will run uh, run the the whatever sources which we ran against. And uh, that's running it here. And we can <laughs> we can see the various endpoints which it has exposed to. Okay. <coughs> This is just an example which uh, everyone gets used to. So like, um, what are the different contentions, like logging aspects of the library. Uh, the developers don't do that, okay? These endpoints are not written by developers. If you see the code, none of these endpoints are written. It's inherited from the dependencies. And like a graph view for the different uh, processes, like class load count, view plot, how your performance on the JVM is happening. So these kinds of stuff are all available in the form of libraries by the uh, Twitter common library stuff. And um, um, and like as it, like the important part and the interesting part was a JVM binary created by a Java library. And now let's look at SRC, Scala, com, Twitter, common, examples, <coughs> but, okay. Here, it's a JVM binary which is created from a Scala library. So because Java and Scala are bytecode compatible, you can create a JVM binary from a Scala or a Java library, and you can create this thing too. You can interoperate. <coughs> and it uses the same build system again. You, so it, we have abstracted a couple of layers now. Same build system, same commands, same interfaces, uh, same binary, but internally you can substitute a one library with another. You can use Java or Scala, okay? That's it. And at last, it's not just for Java and Scala, it's for Python too. SRC Python, Twitter, common, uh, SRC Python, Twitter, common, fans. Let's look at it. Fans, let's do it. Okay, and fans is the one which we use, and that itself is written in, that itself is, that itself is like written in Python, and, and the source code is in Python. <coughs> what I'm trying to say is it's bootstrap. See, I use the pants command initially, right? And so I'm going to look into the pants code itself. Uh, and I open the build file, and I see that it's a Python binary by name Py. It's just like I showed you, there was a JVM binary, and now it's a Python binary. And the Python binary by name uh, pants, and it has an entry point as whatever it starts to, and it has a dependencies, like what it depends on. And the dependencies, if you look, here it depends on the pants lib, okay? And, and it says that for what platforms it can build. It can build for current, it can build for Mac OS X or Linux. And the pants lib, if you see, it's a Python library, okay? <coughs> and the Python library depends on so many other Python libraries, like, uh, like the app is our application framework, or the confluence is the, confluence is a, is a tool for a wiki-like thing, okay? It's for publishing, and then, um, it can depend on like context util and some other other languages like process util and stuff like that. So the encouragement is to write libraries modular so that your library can be used by some other project. And uh, and once you have the dependencies on it, you can build pants in a similar way like this. Pants go pants src python twitter pants, and uh, this will go about building that building that. Uh, Pants binary, okay, just like a Java library, we have a pants binary. And <coughs> it wrote it inside the dish directory. See, uh, sorry, no. It wrote, first, pre previously we created a ping pong dot jar, right? And ping pong dot jar has the uh, unzip minus here. Uh, it has all the contents of the class. And similarly, uh, pants dot text has the contents 
of the PYC files which are uh, which are to be created for running them. Okay, <coughs> this, this single executable can now go compile your Java Scala and everything for and create binaries, can run tasks and uh, do multiple things. Uh, that I mean, that's pretty much like I wanted to give an example of uh, how it feels like to have a build file and uh, compile a Java Scala binary and stuff like that. And uh, it's interesting that other companies are adopting it. Foursquare is a major company which is using Pansible system. Stumble upon is another. Um, and uh, others, like if Twitter engineers go farming some other companies, they kind of like, since they got gotten used to it, they go about using it. So, um, and common libraries are, since heavy effort is put into it and it's open source too, it's easy to utilize it, okay? I, um, some, I sometimes don't like some of the portions of it because, um, because there's too much abstraction, but still it's, it's good to, to have a look and then develop something like that. Um, a lot of things are featured in media. There are slots which are, if you, if you go here, uh, there is like plenty of projects which, uh, which are <coughs> available. Like, uh, <coughs> like there is Storm, there is Scalding. Scalding is like a Hadoop job running using Scala for, uh, using Scala. Finagle is our RPC system, which is one of the core for the Twitter. And then uh, type JavaScript stuff. I'm not a web engineer, but there are a lot of web engineers who do plenty of good work in, in, in Twitter. I have no idea about that. But that's type ahead. Zipkin is for like tracing. And uh, Twemcast is the main crash proxy, which is used by Wikipedia as well. And uh, <coughs> Bijection is like a Scala library. I have no idea what it does. But um, there are plenty. And we talked about commons only right now. Okay. Like that, there are like so many other stuff. And, and Twitter got featured in a uh, number of medias recently, like the uh, uh, tweets per second record. Okay, this one was interesting. Uh, here, new p new tweets per second record. On August 3rd, 2012, I guess, 2013. Very recently, okay. Um, yeah, it was August 12, 2013. It hit a new tweets per second as 150,000 tweets per second. This is huge. I mean, you remember just a few days back, few years back, there was a C10K problem. Can a web server handle 10,000 connections per second and stuff like that? Now look at this, it's 150 tweets per second. It's huge. And, uh, and this blog post explains about how it went about doing that and what happens when, the, when so many things happen. And Twitter didn't break that, that's why, <laughs> that's why this record is. And w what was the event which was happening which took place was, I think uh, Japanese aired some uh, um, Japan people watch the airing of Castle in the Sky. I have no idea what it is. Okay, <laughs> so when Japan was watching Castle in the Sky, there were so many people tweeting about it, and then it hit the high rank of like 150,000 tweets per second. It, it's a mark, how mark? When Obama kind of like says that we want the election or something like that, that's huge. Okay, or when um, what is it? A thank you Sachin campaign, which happened, that was huge. Okay, and there's a lot going on. Um, and there are other media articles which got featured too. Like um, this one, the second coming of Java, the Relic Returns to Rule the Web. This explains how, uh, how the Java is used. Okay? Java by it, it's JVM. JVM and then other languages on top of JVM. And then there is a Return of Ball, how Twitter rebuilt a Guru secret weapon. Um, <coughs> this is about our uh, uh, cloud infrastructure by name uh, Mesos. Okay? It's open source too. <coughs> So it's an Apache project. Uh, so apache.mesos.org. So uh, making it easy to build the resource efficient stuff. Um, Airbnb seems to be another consumer, consumer of it. Uh, what it is, it is based by the University of Berkeley project. There's a professor by name Stoika, who's a researcher, very famous in the distributed systems world. <coughs> he kind of leads it and um, this is like if your company doesn't want to spend uh, money on Amazon Web Services because they are costly, but you want to have the same scalable uh, scalability which Amazon Web Services provides and same kind of like uh, uh, abstraction which AWS provides. Instead of investing on AWS, you run your own way AWS. I mean, that's what it is about. Build, uh, download Mesos, install it on all your hosted machines, and then provide your engineers as AWS instances. It's like build your own cloud kind of thing. Um, this one is like a 
Um, so Twitter doesn't use AWS. We use Mesos because it's developed within, uh, installed on all the machines. Our jobs are running on Mesos, and uh, it can be monitored. It can be, and it's like standard distributed system stuff. Okay. Uh, so that had got a good feature, and that's again as the start as this article shows. Uh, it's inspired from the Google again. Okay. Uh, Google has done really good stuff in this, in not just Silicon Valley but all over the world. Uh, so. <clears throat> So there is a lot of technologies which are built uh, very similar or sometimes when they are building the second time, it's built better than that. Oh. This is another example which you want to see. Um, that's what I wanted to share and uh, if you have any questions, I can take. I hope it was interesting, a uh, lot of information was present. And if you have any specific questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Yeah. Thank you. Questions or discussions? Nothing? No? Questions for yes. Sensio? Yes. Uh, hands in the office. Are you a compiler system that compiles across all languages or languages? Uh, no. Uh, the underlying compilers are still GCC, JV, uh, G -J, J Java, and stuff, and Scala SBT. Okay. But uh, in order to bundle all the projects together, it's like Makefile. So Makefile is the traditional build system which we know. Make and Makefile. Makefile by itself doesn't invoke. Makefile by inside it invokes GCC, right? So in a similar way, these structure the projects in such a way that you can have the organizations, you can have the, you can have the compilers, correct compilers with correct flag getting invoked to build the binary. Yeah. They are not compilers by themselves. Two questions. Sure. Pardon? Python 2. <coughs> but uh, Pyth it's compatible with Python 3. It's Python 2.7. <coughs> but Path itself is written in Python 2.7. It's compatible with Python 3, upward compatible. <coughs> um, um, I have no reason, um, we have no reasons why we are not using Python 3. Like, I mean, I guess you, you treat uh, different uh, major version changes like a different language. That's. Um, no, not for not for Python inside of the the, the languages. There are compatibility li label uh, libraries which are written. Uh, I'll, I'll show you an example. Uh, um, <coughs> common. Okay, let's look at uh, Twitter common HTTP. Okay, so look at this code. Okay, compatibility Py three. Um, if there is a comparative layer of Py3, uh, we, we import statements are written in such a way. And if there is a, if there's not a Python 3, it's written in such a way. So it's some random thing which I recollected, but the code is written for Python 3 to be, I mean, that's because the, lang the developers who work on this care about abstractions, generality, and everything. If I were to do it, I'm, I'm not sure I might have done it like that, because I think I would prefer sometimes simpler, straightforward approach. But some people prefer it more abstract, general, and uh, overly scalable things. Yeah. So it's both Python 3, Python 2, and anytime it can be switched to Python 3. I think. So this one, <laughs> Blaze, the Google's build system, that seems to be written in Python. OK. And the build file, which I showed, <coughs> uh, the, <coughs> well, let's, Uh, SRC is common, SRC, Java, com, Twitter, common, ping, examples, ping pong. See, I, I'm opening a file by name build file. But look at the syntax of this. Okay, imagine that this is a function call. And the function call has a named parameter by name name. And this is the second parameter by name dependencies, which is like a list. <coughs> and each of the elements of the list are uh, are a parameter with a function call by name pants. This whole build file is a compiled Python file. And the, how it works is, it it, uh, it, uh, it traverses all the build files and then PYC compiles them. So if we, if we once I compile it, find uh, type <coughs> name startup PYC, you will find that there are builded or PYCs also. Yeah, here. They can build it up. So <coughs> the build file itself, which are written like a text file for writing your dependencies, 
those are Python files themselves. So it can be compiled and then made into a single compiled object which can be interpreted. Choice of language as a Python is historical. It was chosen before I joined, uh, probably because Google's Blaze was using Python, and possibly because you can write your you can write your configuration Docker file as a language itself to support multiple. And since it's a language, you can do a lot more thing with the language instead of just writing your configuration file. And uh, and bootstrapping. Java has the cost of bootstrapping. Okay, Java processes are very fast. Uh, but it has a cost of bootstrapping. Like when you write a tool and then you run it, it needs time to start. Whereas Python doesn't have it. So these are some things. All technical reasons, like perhaps, yeah. I think. Uh, it uses SBT, but it uses Zinc as the Zinc as the uh, as the thing which are comparable. Uh, there's a good uh, article. Uh, uh, it's called, is it TypeSafe which is uh, creating the Scala compiler? Yeah, TypeSafe. So, let's TypeSafe Scala pants. Okay, sorry. So, Zinc and incremental compilation, okay. Um, <coughs> so, this, this TypeSafe company which creates the Scala, I don't know how they are associated with Scala, but they are majorly creating Scala tools on it. They mentioned about <coughs> using Zinc to increase the speed of Scala compilation. And PAMS enables Zinc by default. And I think here, uh, yeah, <coughs> it says Zinc has been already been integrated with Scala Maven plugin that's currently being integrated with a new build tool developed by Twitter called PAMS. So uh, uh, it increases the speed by a couple of points. Uh, major speed up is gained more by caching. Like uh, once your uh, build is uh, created, uh, like here, uh, inside the pants.d directory, sorry. Here there's, there's a whole lot of things which are cached. And then the caching seems to work in effect. Second time there is no compilation, it's just copy. And if there are multiple developers which are developing, and if I and, if I and you use the same module as in the shared library, and if my pants build compiles for me, when it comes for compiling for you, it will not do it because it can simply download it from the network for you. So, a lot of tricks in caching and stuff which is used to, to speed up the process. So, the has the caching Yes, not just local but remote as well. The open source fans definitely has it and that's how the, the Foursquare, which is a 100% Scala shop, seem to have increased their build speed when using Scala. <coughs> I think. Next. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Huh? Yep. Sorry. Okay. The it's a it's a SHA. Uh, the SHA is con con the the SHA is calculated from the Git Git SHA at the moment, as well as the path of the. If you see the names of it, I think you can you can figure out. Um, like there will be various different uh, shards which will be computed and then met for for different things. It's basically it's the name, path, and Git version number. All they play together to create a unique artifact cache. I think. Yeah, cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you for listening. <laughs>